be careful that the people who are getting the most attention don't have an agenda that's not in your best interest. No, I'm not going to have a conversation about atheism plus. I'm talking in general. The people who are getting the most attention. Be skeptical. You know, some of these people might be getting funding to be spewing hate. Wonder why they're so invested in attacking other people. Wonder about it. Wonder how it's benefiting them aside from ego massage and self-masturbation. Is what they're saying similar to, oh, I don't know, a political party or uh, a talk radio host? or a so-called news channel? Are they saying things that sound similar? Might they be being sponsored? Be skeptical. Don't swallow the Kool-Aid. I'm telling you this because I'm getting out. I don't know if you can tell in some of my videos that my breathing is bad. I probably have emphysema and I probably don't have too much longer because it's probably gone past the tipping point. And you know, I don't trust the medical industrial complex with good reason, not because I'm paranoid and mentally ill, but because it's an exploitive, corrupt system. And I don't want to be under their care because I know how they handle people who are low income. I know what their stereotypes are. I know that they will infantilize me and completely negate my dignity. And I've had enough of that in my life. So there's probably not a whole lot of time left. I think once you get past the tipping point with emphysema, you got about five years. The other thing is that, uh, you know, with these teeth this bad and the uh, abscesses and whatnot, like right now I have a splitting headache. I just took some aspirin, but for no good reason, all of a sudden I have a splitting headache, and I think it's because of my teeth. And the teeth can cause infections, which can affect the brain the optic nerves, the sinuses, respiration, and the sack of fluid around my heart. Thank you. You sent money so I could move, but I couldn't move because the job was given to somebody else. And I can't afford to move to that town without a job. The cheapest trailer pad out there would be 175 a month, and I'd have to pay all the deposits on utilities and so on. And out there, it's 2,000 feet higher than it is here. And here, I'm about 5,000 feet. So the summers are very severe because you're closer to the sun. There's less atmosphere. And the winters are very severe because you're closer to outer space. There's less atmosphere. And I'm in a 30-foot travel trailer. And I'd be out there 2,000 feet higher where the snow gets very, very thick. True, I'd be closer to a large town. But it would be very cold, and the utility bills on top of the trailer fee, it would just be either exorbitant or miserable. Um, it gets really hot in here with the air conditioner not on, even with all the parachutes and stuff I have over it for shade. And it can get brutal cold in here. Right now where I'm living, the utilities are included at 275 So I don't have to pay deposits to get utilities hooked up. And I've got my internet, which just jumped to 45 from 30. And I'm physically exhausted. Trying to pack to move that last time. Gee whiz. Had a nice little greenhouse built on the front of the trailer. I tore it down so I could move the trailer. Um, packing stuff up. It was so hectic and chaotic. And it truly and literally exhausted me. Look, regular household chores exhaust me. Going to the next town for groceries exhausts me. So I don't have much physical strength. I don't get enough exercise because I'm afraid to walk around in this town. And of course, in a 30-foot travel trailer, there's not much room to move around. I'm getting out of everything. I don't know what my videos will be about. Probably the same stuff because I still care about the same stuff. But I'm not even going to pretend like I can be part of organizing anything. There's too much hate inside of groups and from the outside of groups. There's too much anger and fear and suspicion. And there's no common courtesy. Just basic etiquette would cure a bunch of this stuff. If we could all agree to just some basic etiquette, it would save a lot. But nobody can trust anybody else. 
because you never know what people's motives are. If they're trying to be sneaky and pretend they're your friend so that they can get the goods on you. I just had to dump somebody that I knew from uh, YouTube who was also on my Skype, was a Facebook friend, and was in the Atheism Plus group. And the person is so mentally unstable that they invited a bunch of other people into the group. And I didn't know it. I didn't have the admin settings set right so that I would be the only one to admit people into the group. Invited in a nest of trolls. When I went to their pages, they were complaining that they were getting so many notifications from um, Atheism Plus. They were too dumb to figure out how to set their own email settings so they wouldn't get emails every time I took a fart. So this person had a screaming hissy fit at me on Facebook, and I had to get rid of this person and all those trolls in Atheism Plus. On uh, All over the internet, this person had access to me. Never hurt this person, never bothered this person. This person has nothing else to do except form enemies and have little petty flaming troll wars. I, I, I don't have time for that, and I can't protect myself from seriously disturb people who would want to invade my privacy in real life. Every organization where there are human beings is problematic, and I knew that going into it, and especially something that's trying to start something brand new. It's not just that. It's all over. It's all over. Anything that I try to in, invest time in and be involved in, there are so many unnecessary problems because people are just so cruel to each other. I've had enough cruelty in my life. I'm alone. I'm in pain. I'm sick. And I'm scared. And I don't need other people's cruelty coming in at me from Australia and New Zealand and uh, the UK and uh, the Middle East. And I don't need it. I don't need it. I have no way to protect myself. Now, what I've done with your money that you sent so that I could move, I think I put about $200 worth of it in the gas tank over the course of however many months it's been. I got a tune-up. That was $250. I bought some stuff for the car like windshield wiper truck, windshield wipers, light bulbs, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't even remember what all. I'm trying to give you an itemized list, but I don't know. But that came to about $150. This was all stuff to get prepared to move. I still got some of your money in the bank, a couple hundred, few hundred dollars in the bank that I'm setting aside in case I can move. But frankly, I'm so weak and sick, I don't know how I would. I think I'm going to die in this parking lot. Right now, my main concern is what am I going to do about the animals? Most of them are old, and hopefully most of them will die off before I do. And the ones that won't, I mean, Ivan the gray cat on my bed that you can't see because the camera moved. Uh, Ivan is kind of in shadows. You can't really see him. He's an old, sick guy with bad teeth. And um, the oldest cat, Choco, well, hell, he's 20 years old. He doesn't have, hardly have any teeth left. But how much longer can either one of those two last? Oz is the black cat. She's fluffy and cute. Maybe I can find her a home. Fatty's that big white cat with the spots. And she's such a sweetie pie. I don't think she'll be hard to adopt. And Weasel has been stolen three or four times now because people think he's so adorable. It's just the two older male cats that I don't know if I could find homes for. But I need to be around people who are happy and supportive and uh, doing useful, fun, interesting stuff and not caught in this cycle of hate and anger and resentment and cruelty. Because I need to stay as emotionally stable as I can so that I can finish out my life in some kind of peace. There are things I would have loved to have done. There are two steamer trunks here full of my writing that are going to go in the dumpster when I die because I've got no way to do something with them. Um, stuff from all the way back to junior high school. I would have liked to have lived on a rural piece of property again where I could have had goats. I don't think I will ever forgive myself for the fact that I got suckered into moving out here and got victimized by real criminals and that I don't know what happened to my goats. I grieve about them every day. 
I still get wake, woken up in the middle of the night thinking I hear their voices. I would have liked to have gone out maybe to Navajo land and had a few of those um, funny sheep they've got out there that are kind of going endangered because everybody wants white wool now. I think they're called churro sheep. I don't remember. Look them up. They're beautiful sheep. Now, I think I'm going to die in this parking lot. I'm not strong enough to move myself. I'm not strong enough to pack. I'm barely strong enough to go get groceries anymore and do the basic chores around here. <coughs> and basic chores around here are really hard because they involve hauling water and not enough refrigeration and not, a, not adequate heating and too small and cramped of a space where things in the kitchen spill. Or I have to worry about infestations of insects like those little tiny gnats. There will be clouds of them and they bite my eyes working like hell to keep the flies out. I just saw a cockroach in the kitchen. I've never had cockroaches in this trailer until I moved next to that nasty old man with his filth. And I can't afford to have this thing infested with cockroaches. They'll be all over me, having to wash dishes outside. The weird way I have to take a bath. I have to plan on the weather and cold weather before I can take a bath. If it's too cold, I can't bathe because I can't draw water and I can't afford to be cold in here and wet. So just be careful who, who you're listening to. The angriest people, the ones who hook into your emotions, the, the resentment, the fear that you have. Be careful. There's a reason they have that agenda. And it's not always just their personal ego and their own personal bitterness. It's propaganda. It worked in the Middle East, you know. You got a bunch of young males who can't find employment, who are sexually frustrated because their religion tells them they can't have sex until they're married, and their culture tells them they can't marry until they can provide housing. And the only real way to provide housing in places like Egypt is to buy an apartment. You have to have a really good job before you can buy an apartment. So there's thousands and thousands of poorly educated, sexually frustrated, angry men running the streets. And that anger is being exploited. I'm not just singling out Egypt. I'm saying all over, and it's happening in this country. There aren't enough jobs in the United States compared to the number of people. And the good jobs are all being sent overseas where they can get them done cheaper. And there's a lot of anger and people are exploiting that for their own benefits. Be careful what you believe. Don't swallow the Kool-Aid. But I can't keep doing this. You know, I posted that video to Ophelia. And then I posted that thing about the warning that came out the same day that I posted the Ophelia video. And I've got a guy in the group who's accusing me of stuff that I'm not doing and and he's a big mouth white guy who has made an impression and now he's starting to bully me I won't play thank you for having had faith in me I'm sorry I couldn't have moved and given you a happy ending that I got the job at the radio station and started producing news and started to be self-supporting. God, I wanted that so badly. I can't do radio here. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear the cars going by outside. It's 10 o'clock at night. I'm on Interstate 40, the largest cross-continental interstate in the United States. It's never quiet here, and I can't soundproof this trailer enough to get broadcast quality audio, and there's no place in town I could go to do that. Like, I couldn't rent a studio or something, or, you know, an office and turn it into a studio. I can't do radio, and I'm not much good at anything else. Writing and broadcasting is all I'm good at. And if you don't have a ticket from a university and the right connections, they're not going to let you do that without a fight. So I'm shut out. Be careful what you're believing. I don't think the skeptical community is near skeptical enough. If you want to see me as a failure and a loser because I couldn't move to to that other city and get set up there. There's nothing I can do about it. I won't fight you about it. I won't argue because I don't want to internalize those messages. It's not true. I'm one of the hardest workers I know with the least amount to show for it. Anyway, I'm putting this up.